Um, okay, well, uh, thank you all for um, joining this webinar today and thank you the organizers as well for offering me the chance to present my work today, which is about how the somatic cells in the Drosophila testes support germ cell survival by shuttling glycolytic products. So um, in the lab, um, it should be, ah, there we go. Uh, in the lab, our main interest is understanding how tissue homeostasis works. So we want to understand how adult tissues are preserved throughout the life of an organism. So if we think of an adult tissue, what we will find is a specialized microenvironment that we term a niche. Then around it, we will have a population of adult stem cells. And these cells, as any other stem cell, will be capable of serving you in, meaning that the stem cells will divide and give rise to new stem cells to maintain the stem cell pool. But also the adult stem cells will be capable of giving rise to different cell types that will differentiate and give rise to what in turn will be the functional cells of the tissue. Now, in order to acquire tissue homeostasis, adult stem cells need to balance very well self-renewal and differentiation. So the numbers of the progeny are generated, in, uh, are generated properly, but also these newly generated cells need to communicate to each other properly to preserve tissue function. So our model tissue is the fly testis. So uh, this tissue is capable of generating sperm throughout the life of the fly because it has a stem cell niche close to the apical tip. So I'm going to explain very quickly how the system works. Anchored to the apical tip, we have this cluster of postmitotic somatic cells that we call the hub, and is the niche for the surrounding stem cell population. So in the testes, we have two different lineages. You can see highlighted in blue, the germline that will give rise to sperm, and in orange, the supporting somatic lineage. Now, starting with the germline, contacting the niche, we have the germline stem cells, they will give rise to a committed progenitor that we call the gonioblast. And this gonioblast will undergo a series of incomplete divisions, giving rise to structures that we call germ cysts, comprised of two, four, eight, or 16 cells before undergoing meiosis. Now, as far as the somatic lineage is concerned, we have a stem cell population for the somatic lineage as well, that we call the stem cells. They will give rise to a sole cell type, the postmitotic cyst cells, that will unsheath the germline and support it throughout its development. It's worth mentioning that these cyst cells at the point around the four cell stage, they will establish tight junctions between them and the germ cells will be isolated from the surrounding environment. So in spite many labs describing many signaling events among different cell types happening in the tissue, there are still many things that we don't know about the somatic uh, germ communication and how these two lineages coordinate the differentiation programs. So in the flight testes, we can identify every single cell type by morphology, position, and uh, molecular markers. So labeled with Vaseline 3, we can identify the niche. Then using the marker VASA, we can label the entire germ lineage. So uh, um, in the proximities of the niche, we will have germline stem cells, small and round germline stem cells, and the germ cells will grow in size as they differentiate. And then as far as the somatic lineage is concerned, we can identify the cis stem cells and the immediate daughters by this marker ZFH1. And then progressively as differentiation happens, these uh, ZFH1 marker will disappear and we can observe the appearance of higher positive uh, differentiated cis cells. So in the lab, we've been historically interested in the somatic cells and previous work from the lab established the transcriptomic profile of uh, the somatic stem cells and the somatic differentiated cells, trying to understand what, which are the regulators of somatic stem cells of renewal and differentiation. And what we observed is that upon differentiation, somatic cells increase several pathways related to energy metabolism. Among them, we saw an increase in mitochondrial metabolism, which we were not that surprised to observe because it's been extensively reported in the literature this correlation between differentiation and increase in mitochondrial metabolism. But we were a bit more surprised to observe an increase in glycolysis because historically glycolysis has been more linked to non-differentiated proliferative status. So then uh, we wanted to study into a bit more detail what is glycolysis doing uh, in the Drosophila testes. And the first thing that we did was to validate this transcriptomic data. So we used uh, reporters for several glycolytic enzymes. Here I'm showing the results for the enzyme aldolase. So we used a GFP reporter 
expecting to see it in differentiated somatic cells. And this is what we observe. So I'll guide you through the image. The membranes in this image are labeled with this large incision. So the asterisks mark the niche. You can see around the niche early somatic cells labeled for this marker called traffic jam. And then the reporter for this glycolytic enzyme is mostly absent from the stem cell compartment. And you can clearly see it uh, drawing the outlines of somatic cells and sheath in the germline. We got similar results for three more reporters. So our conclusion is that our transcriptomic data is correct. And then we have an increase in glycolysis as somatic cells uh, differentiate. Now, what is the role of glycolysis in this context? As I mentioned before, glycolysis has been traditionally linked to a proliferative status. So we wanted to confirm that that's not the case in our system. So if we just pay attention to the somatic lineage, the only proliferating cells are the self-renewing system cells. If glycolysis is fueling this, then when we specifically knock down glycolysis in somatic cells, what we, what we would expect to see is a uh, um, is lower numbers of um, somatic stem cells, uh, an impairment in the cell renewal capacity. So this is what we did. We knocked down several glycolytic enzymes specifically in the somatic lineage and then counted for the number of set of H1 positive cis stem cells. What we observed is that for the great majority of the glycolytic enzymes studied, we did not observe a significant decrease in the number of set of H1 positive cells. Therefore, concluding that indeed glycolysis is not required for system cells of renewal. Going back to our original observation, uh, we know that glycolysis is increased as somatic cells differentiate. The question is, is this required for somatic cell differentiation? We're uh, doing a similar approach. If this is true and we knock down glycolytic enzymes, what we should observe is a lack of differentiation in those testes. Uh, we followed the same strategy, specifically we knocked down glycolytic enzymes in the somatic lineage. And then we compared a control situation where, as I mentioned before, we would have set of H1 positive system cells around the niche and then IA positive differentiated cells away from it to our experimental conditions. What we observed is that there were no differences when we knocked down glycolysis in the soma, and we could still observe uh, fully differentiated somatic cells away from the niche. So then we have this situation where we have this increase in the glycolytic pathway as somatic cells differentiate, but it doesn't seem to be required autonomously in the somatic lineage. So one possibility is that glycolysis is not required in the somatic cells per se, it is required for the function of supporting the developing germ cells. And I would like to remind you again that at this stage of a four cell germ cyst, the somatic cells establish tight junctions between them, and then the germ cells have a compromised accessibility to the surrounding environment. So what we hypothesized is that somatic cells perform glycolysis, and then they provide glycolytic uh, products to the developing germline. If this is true, when we knock down glycolysis in the somatic cells, what we should observe is an increase in germ cell death. Now, we can observe germ cell death in the fly testes labeling uh, using the probe lysa tracker because the germ cells in the fly testes do not die by apoptosis. They follow this program called germ cell death. One of the steps of this program is the strong acidification of the cytoplasm that can be spotted using the probe lysa tracker. So in a control, approximately 20% of the germ cysts will die in physiological conditions. What we were expecting is that if these developing cysts require metabolic support from the soma, when we knock down glycolysis, we should observe an increase in the number of these dying germ cysts. And this is exactly what we observed. So again, for the great majority of the enzymes analyzed, when we knock them down specifically in the soma, we could observe an increase in the number of dying germ cysts. To further confirm that glycolysis is not required in the germ cells, but they require um, for it for it, uh, to be performed by the supporting somatic cells, what we did is to knock down glycolysis specifically in the germ cells with two different drivers. Firstly, I'm showing an early driver that is mostly present in early germ cells around the niche. And when we knock down glycolytic enzymes, for the great majority of them, we did not observe an increase in dying germ cysts. And the same case was observed when we used a later driver that is switched on uh, later in development of the germ cells. So again, 
we could not observe a significant increase uh, in the number of dying germ cells when we knock down these glycolytic enzymes. Um, so then, so far, what I've shown you is that uh, survival of germ cells is, it seems to be dependent on uh, the shuttling of glycolytic products from the soma. How is this transport happening? Our uh, favorite hypothesis was that monocarboxylate transporters would be involved. So these transporters have already been linked to the shuttling of glycolytic byproducts. So following uh, the same reasoning, if this is true and we knock down these transporters in the soma, we should observe an increase in the uh, number of dying germ cells. We performed the screen and then got a positive hit for, for this lactate transporter called Silnun. So all these data together takes us to propose a model uh, where around this four cell stage, um, the germ cells have a compromised accessibility to the environment. They are dependent on metabolic support from the uh, surrounding somatic cells, which will perform glycolysis and shuttle glycolytic byproducts through the action of this MCT called Silnun. And with that, I would like to thank the uh, members of my lab and our neighboring labs for the uh, continuous support and feedback. And I'll be very happy to take any questions. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. So while we wait for the questions to come in, um, I can ask a quick one. So yeah. is there, so these are syncytial? Yes. Right? Well, I mean, it's individual cysts all developing as uh, you move away from the stem cell area. I mean, yeah, they are syncytial in the sense that they share the cytoplasm. Yeah. Right. So, so, so why do you think it's only the those couple cysts and not the ones above or below that are sensitive to the metabolites? Or do you think they're all sensitive, but only the ones that are in the middle respond? Um, we haven't made like a full characterization of which step of the germ cell development is more sensitive. Um, I would say that probably around the four or eight cell stage, quite um, right after becoming dependent on the support from the soma, they seem to be more uh, sensitive to this um, metabolic support. Cool. You have a question? Um, so Catherine says, great talk. Thank you, Diego. Do you know anything from your transcriptomic analysis about what's regulating the change in metabolic profile through differentiation? Not that it comes uh, very clear from the transcriptomic profile. We have some uh, favorite subs suspects. So we know that somatic differentiation is driven by insulin signaling. So we thought that there might be a role coupling somatic differentiation to the expression of these um, glycolytic enzymes. We get some conflicting results. Some enzymes seem to respond, some others seem not to. So my guess is that it's not just one specific signaling pathway regulating this. We are exploring more possibilities at the moment. Right. So you have a question. How do you separate the effect of supporting cell differentiation on germ cell growth versus the effect of metabolism itself? Um, can you repeat that question again? Yeah, I think they're wondering, you know, whether there is a whether there's a specific effect on differentiation for germ cell growth versus, I guess, a change on just metabolism. Um, I don't, I don't yeah. think we're capable yeah. of uncoupling that. Yeah. It's difficult because right here we're just assessing the survival of the developing cyst. I yeah. think we would need to design a different experimental strategy to tackle that question. This is an interesting point of view, yeah. Right. And Blanche Capel is wondering, do you see an upregulation of any other metabolic pathways when you disrupt glycolysis? Um, we have not, we are not, um, we have not started that yet. We know that there is also an increase in uh, lipid degradation as somatic cells differentiate. So we are exploring the how these somatic cells um, just um, rewire their metabolism. So part of their catabolic pathways are just directed to support the germline and the other ones might be directed to support themselves. Um, so you don't think there's a compensation, I guess, is what... Yeah, no, we haven't addressed that, that question yet, no. Okay, and for now, I'll ask a final question from Rafael DeMarco, and he's wondering, why do you think glycolysis is required for germ cell, for the cyst survival? Is it because of ATP or of some other metabolite? 
we are exploring what they do with the uh, metabolite that they receive uh, from the soma. Um, recent work from uh, Bruno Houdry in France has um, studied later stages of germ cell development, and he argues that it's not generating ATP, but generating acetyl-CoA to acetylate proteins. Um, the truth is that right now we don't seem to see a requirement of oxidative phosphorylation in the developing germ cells, or mm. TCA cycle at least. So we are exploring what else might they be. might be doing with these metabolites because it doesn't seem to be just energetic. They don't seem to be that dependent on that. 